Thank y'all for tuning in to Ghetto Ways. I'm your host today, Johnny Domino, and today with me, I got my fam, Marcus Smith. What's up, brother? Man, what's going on, man? Man, I'm so glad to have you down here in Baton Rouge. How has been treating you? Man, it's, it's been good, man. Uh, been eating good. <laughs> I was saying, you know tell that? them what your favorite thing is right now. Man, them boudin balls, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and it's so yeah. crazy, man, because I ain't really, I haven't had those before, really. Yeah. You know, I'm from Columbus, Georgia, but that's not something that I actually tried. So right. when you put me on that, I was like, yeah, I got to go back down yeah. and get me some. You can't go wrong with them, man. You go in there and get you about a four-piece boudin ball. Yeah. Oh, uh, you might want to get eight because you're going to have to air fry them later so you can eat nah, them, man. You know I had to get the shrimp po' boy today, too. You oh, know what I'm man. I got you, eat. you went by Cowboy. Yeah. Uh, you went a couple places, man. Yeah. So, look, for, for people who don't know, you know what I'm saying, uh, tell me a little bit about your background, the things you do. Just tell me a little bit about yourself to let the people know who I'm, who I'm talking to today. Man, so, uh, Marcus Smith II, I am a former uh, NFL veteran, okay. played in the league six years. I went to the University of Louisville. Graduated from there. I was the Teddy Bridgewater era, Coach mm-hmm. Strong, won the Sugar Bowl okay. there. Um, got drafted in the first round to the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm-hmm. Uh, played with the Eagles three years. Then I played with the Seahawks for two years. Okay. Played with the Commanders for two years. Um, my, I would say probably my fifth year in the league, had a, a run in with what our topic today is suicide. You yeah. feel me? Um, yeah. So that's kind of like what led me into the work that I'm doing now, which right. is uh, the Circle of Them, which is my foundation. It's it's for to unmask the feelings that cause anxiety and depression. Right. Um, right. So that's kind of what pushed me into it because, you know, as black men, mm-hmm. we don't talk about these things. We don't speak up about it. So I wanted to be the driving force behind that, especially for athletes, because I understood that athletes, was not really talking about that, especially not football players. Right. You know, it's a barbaric sport that we play. So Right, right. You know, the funny part about that is, man, you got drafted first round, you went to the pros, so you made some money in the game, right? Yeah, yeah. So people, I know it's hard for people to even fathom or even understand that, you know, you had problems, you know, with the money there, yeah. with the, the success from being able to go to a, 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 it's a lottery. Yeah. A lot of kids don't make it, man. Nah. You know, and you went all the way, and not only did you, you did you did a longer term, what's the average right now for an NFL player to stay in the league? I think it's about two years. About two years. It's, it's getting lower checked, and lower. Yeah, lower and lower. Yeah. Uh, health, uh, all kind of stuff, and like you said, yeah. it's a barbaric sport. Yeah. So, you know, suicide uh, awareness a month. Um, tell me a little bit about your story and kind of like uh, try to make the people understand like how could somebody with so much success and uh, you know all what people think in their mind oh he got it going on you know this this and that you know talk to him about it and, and uh, let's talk about that for a second you know I mean? man so yeah so really anxiety was something that started with me because I was eight years old it was something that um, I had an anxiety attack when I was probably eight had it at my grandmother's house. So that was the first initial attack for me. And so my grandmother, she put like this uh, blood blood pressure reading on my my arm, thinking that it was something with my my blood pressure, right, Mm -hmm. being a kid. So we didn't really understand, we didn't really know that that was something that we was dealing with, right? right? And so think about that, think about dealing with that. That was the first time I probably masked something, but then also I was masking my parents divorced at the time. So being a mm-hmm. kid, if you're going through your parents being there, you had both of your parents and then they split, right? Mm-hmm. As a kid, looking at your parents, they they want to keep that away from you. They don't mm-hmm. really want to talk about it, but they you see that each and every day. So think about masking those issues right now. Wow. I'm using sports as a band-aid, mm-hmm. right? Sports for me is like all right, I'm on a football field. I can tune everything else out. I'll deal with it when I get home. But when you get home, you don't know how to deal with it mm-hmm. because my father, he never really taught me how to deal with it because he was dealing with it kind of the same. same way. Yeah. So football became your coping mechanism. Yep. It, it sure did. It, it became my coping mechanism. It was something that I could release my anger. I could release my stress, frustration. I could put it all on the football field and, and be fine. So think about going throughout my entire life like that. It was certain points of my life, even in high school, where now I'm dealing with anxiety, I'm not talking about it, Mm -hmm. but now I have this thing where I can't eat. 
So that's when the, the you, you can't eat starts to, you know, starts to mess with me. But as a kid, I can go out there and not have nothing on my stomach and play a great game. But as a yeah, as a young adult, yeah. you can't do that. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So now you going you going forward. I get to Louisville, same thing. Mm-hmm. Now I can't eat. I wanted to quit like the first two years at Louisville. Right, my coaches they end up talking me into staying, but I wanted to quit because. I thought something was wrong with me. I thought like I had a heart issue. I thought something was that anxiety and that uh panic. Yeah, cause I right. I, I remember when mine came, bro. Like people, I don't. I never understood anxiety and anxiety until I got it. Mm-hmm. Cause you think it's just so. Hey, and the worst thing you tell somebody who's having a panic attack uh, is calm down. Yeah, cause they probably didn't have nothing on their mind. They wasn't thinking about shit. Nope. They didn't have nothing going on. They were feeling pretty good. Yep. And then out of nowhere, they chest just grabbed them and said, "What the? Fuck? Yeah." Yeah, yeah. It was hurting. Yeah. You get the, oh. Mm-hmm. And immediately, if you don't know what it is, you call the ambulance. I don't yeah. care who you are. I done called the ambulance so many times that they knew me. Yep, yep. Like by first name. Yeah, it happened again, huh, buddy? And they so patient with me. Because they know, like, <laughs> yeah. you're not dying, your EKG good, your blood sugar's good, your blood pressure's good, you're fucking crazy. That's how I feel, <laughs> yeah. right? So I'm crazy, ain't nothing wrong. Right. I, I called y'all for nothing, right? That's yeah. how it make you feel. Right. Mine didn't come, I, I, I feel bad, you you got it at eight. Yeah. I didn't get mine until I was maybe 38, like 30 something, when I lost my first child. Like anxiety just pop up and anxiety is a bully. Man, I ain't, mm, that's that's the crazy part. It's like, man, it comes up at points in times where you don't even realize. You're like, man, all right, man, why am I feeling like this? And that's what used to happen to me. But I, I used to fight my way through it. You know what I'm saying? I would fight my way through it, fight my way through it, fight well, my way through it. Well, you were professional. If you started at eight, by the time you got to college, you like professional. You you got what they yeah. ten thousand hours. Yeah. You know, ten years. You did eighteen. He was a professional at anxiety. But see, I'm a attack. professional at anxiety, right? We talking about anxiety right mm-hmm. now, right? But at the same time, I don't have any other stressors on me yet. So Ooh, now yeah. I get to the league. Now I got expectations. I got fans. I got general manager. The owners, right? I have to play well in order for me to extend my career. So now all the stuff that I didn't talk about, the baggage that I came with, now I just added that. Plus family. You know how it True. gets with family. They go the family thing. Yeah. I done had money a couple times, right? Yeah. I ain't had no NFL money. Yeah. But I'm I'm the <laughs> one that I used to have to keep a tab on all the kin folk I done gave money to. Yeah. Oh, uh, and I like giving them stuff and they don't pay me back if they mean they can't come get nothing else. Yeah. So I kinda be like paying you the two hundred I right, yeah, and they don't come back, you can't get no more. You know But man? the crazy part about it, man, it it was something that I wanted to do. You know, we me and you, we both givers. Right. So right. it was something that I, that was on my heart to for me to be able to bless my family with what they needed in, in yeah. that in that time. But if I could go back, me being mature like I am now, I would have focused on my season first. And then bless afterwards because the reason for the blessing is for me to perform in the way that I should, right? And so I didn't do that. I was taking care of stuff when I should be really thinking about camp, Mm -hmm. when I should be really focused on the season. And so that took a toll on me. So think about going through that like three, four years, not really doing that then. Now you get cut. Mm -hmm. So I got cut my third year. Do they cut like out of nowhere? Nah, see, you kind of know ahead of time. Like how much? Yeah. What yeah. I guess what I'm asking is I don't know like it. I know when my I job went, met, fired me, I'd be like pissed off like, hey, fuck all y'all, y'all ain't shit. Well, there's, there's <laughs> two different types of firing, yeah. right? Cuts right. or whatever it may be, yeah. right? So you got the person who is doing really well and you don't understand why you get fired. That's the money part. Yeah, but like for- a, uh, Like salary cap type thing? But for me, it wasn't like that. Like I wasn't playing that well, okay. you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't, like I tell people all the time, like I'm not gonna sugarcoat like how I was playing. Like I could have played better in those moments. I could have been better. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, I was talking to you about this earlier. Mm -hmm. When you invest in something, you want to see return on your investment. Most definitely. First year, didn't play, right? Had a lot of stuff going on, anxiety, depression really started to come about. My second year, I started to get my mojo back. Mm -hmm. I started playing well. I was playing more than I got hurt. So now, you really got three years. When you're a first rounder, you really got three years to show what you could do. Mm-hmm. So I really only had one year to prove that I belong, that you know maybe 
uh, I could get that fourth year right. or whatever. But I didn't do enough for them to be like, yeah, we're going to keep you. Who was your first injury? Uh, so I tore my hamstring. And how? Uh, what the recovery on that was? Was it bad? Well, the first time I tore it, I was trying to come back too early because I, I wanted to – Show them that yeah, hey. Point to prove. Then you just that came off a good run. Yeah, I and, follow. And yeah. so I come back and I t- tear it again because it's not all the way healthy. Now you feel whooped. Yeah, because I'm like, dang, bro, like why this keep? I'm like, man, why it keep happening to me? Like, so think about the mental stress that comes along with that, mm-hmm. right? Now your money in jeopardy, right? Yeah, and then and nobody really, you can't. If you were the first one in your family mm-hmm. to get that far, you can't really talk to them about it because their mindset and their ass, the, what they think is not the same with how you think. They, it's they not more in touch so with reality. Right. They yeah. think so more so about like how the fans think. Mm-hmm. Oh, you went to the pros all over where we good for the life we the Jeffersons now. Yeah, yeah. Nah, they ain't paying attention. Yes. Yeah. So I, I went through I went through that, man. It was it was definitely tough going into that that third year. Mm-hmm. Then I obviously I didn't prove enough. And then I end up getting released. So it's like now you see it all everywhere. But I knew I was getting released. But the, the reason behind it, people don't really know this, is my agent called me, right? Said they trying to trade you. Mm-hmm. I said okay. Said yeah, they trying to get any suitor, right? And at the time, the worst team was the Browns. Mm-hmm. So for me, I ain't want to go to the Browns. I wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go. I want to go somewhere. Trying to get my mojo bag. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to go somewhere that can I'm build my career back. <laughs> I don't the know what bad they're gonna blame you. Hey, now nah, look. <laughs> me going fans. to the me going to the Browns now. Right. I would have went. You, you know, win. you got nah, the Sean yeah, Watson, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But For real. at the time, like they was like the, the boo-boo of the league, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the same time, it was like I didn't want to go there, so they tried to get me to take a money, I mean a pay cut. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what, I ain't I'm not gonna take a pay cut because I knew. If I didn't take a pay cut, they would just release me. And then by them releasing me, I can go wherever I want to go. Okay. That was I could choose. One. Yeah. Okay. And how did that all work out? Well, it, it worked out pretty well. I went to the Seattle Seahawks. Okay. And that's where my D line coach was um, that I coached or that coached me in Louisville. Okay. Go, they go a connection. Right. Because he, yeah. I played quarterback my whole life. Mm-hmm. I switched to D line because of him. Mm. He taught me everything I knew. Right. So I went back to who taught me everything I knew, and then my career started to to go uphill. And that's how after that fourth year, I got cut before my fourth season. Mm-hmm. I signed with them. Then I played a whole year with the Seahawks, and then they signed me back on a, a one year deal for my fifth year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, 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 that sounded like that worked out pretty good. Yeah. So let's get to the point where things took a turn for you. Like, uh, what what you what do you feel like? Uh, Brought got you there, and then like for me, I've been more homicidal yeah. than suicidal. So I probably would have made somebody do. I'd have been had time. I ain't want to live no more. Yeah, I ain't care. I was trying to start crap with killers, and yeah, you know, I'd have been there. You know what I'm saying? Just crazy, wanted to uh, beat bullets up and test the waters and, and yeah. run up on the power. You know, yeah. uh, find an arrogant cop and slap the shit out of him or something <laughs> like that's what my mind used to be. I make one yeah. of these motherfuckers kill me. Yeah, but you know that's suicidal in my mind too. But to actually have to fight yourself mm-hmm. with nobody in between, mm-hmm. you know, like. The, the, I had to interact with the stuff I wanted to do. I needed somebody else. I guess that's uh, what they say, suicide by, uh, uh, like when you make the police kill, you pull out a fake gun or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of like I needed somebody to engage. So I guess I might not have been brave enough. Yeah. You yeah. know, but like talk to me about that and make me, I, I want to understand too because I really don't. Uh, what got you there? And, and, and describe to, to me how I feel. But you never know who be going through certain things. Man, man so – it's crazy because I have been dealing with that for a minute. You know what I'm saying? The anxiety, the anxiety turned into depression. So I'm still dealing with depression, even going through in Philly, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't really know how to, to deal with those issues. And I definitely ain't going to talk to a therapist because I don't need nobody knowing what's going on with me, mm-hmm. especially if the therapist is, is in the facility. Yeah, league therapist. I'm like, hold on now, like. I don't need the GM or the owner knowing that I'm in therapy. You know what I'm saying? Because right. now they're going to think, oh, man, 
you know, the, the, the game is a mental game and like you, you're not mentally there. You, you know, give you less. Right, right. <laughs> nah. You're not worth as more. So yeah. judgment, so, stigma. Yeah. So that whole that whole process, I, I'm going through that. So when I get to Seattle, even though I signed a new deal, mm -hmm. I'm still empty. Something something about it, there's something still tugging on me that I haven't addressed, right? And mm -hmm. so we talk about the money, we talk about all that. That that doesn't really change how you feel. Mm -hmm. It can only mm -hmm. put a band-aid on some of the stuff that you're dealing with. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can take care of all the things that you need to take care of, but mm -hmm. like the what's the saying? Like more money, more, more problems, problems right? Yeah, yeah. And that's even with yourself, mm -hmm. right? You have issues even with yourself because of you know how you do things or how you construct different things so it's so it's, it's still something there that is tugging on me and i just got tired bro like i was having anxiety i started having anxiety attacks in my sleep you know what oh, i'm saying that's different so, so you getting woke up out your sleep yeah I'm, I'm waking up gasping for oh, air shit. right so i can't go back to sleep um I'm, I'm like literally on my stomach and it feel like my chest is caving in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know too many people who felt that. I but have. you, you like on your stomach, chest. Your heartbeat can't. start tripping. Man, you, you, you it's it. racing. It's yeah. like pounding through your chest. Yeah. yeah. So you trying to do breathing, that shit ain't working. So think about dealing with that for the whole span that, you know, sometimes it would happen in college and, you know, things of that nature. But think about dealing with that the whole time you're in the NFL. Right, and you trying to perform, and this is the last year I know that I have to perform in a way so people can see, oh, who I am. Right, mm -hmm. so it was a lot riding on this year. So I was getting anxiety from from that, and I just woke up one morning and I kissed my wife on on the head because I was just I was super tired. I couldn't really sleep. I couldn't really, I wasn't really performing in the way that I wanted to. I had just got hurt too, so I'm trying to come back off an injury again. And I got in my car, started to drive, bro. And literally, if you could think, like I could paint this picture for you. Mm -hmm. Going in Seattle, going down this hill, rocks on the side. It's like, if you go off this side, you're a dead man, right? So what I was- Steep slope type thing? Yeah, it was like, you. it's beautiful scenery now. Right, but you don't want to be tumbling down. Nah, there. nah, so the whole time I'm thinking like, how I'm gonna hurt myself and get get rid of this pain. I'm not really thinking about anything else. I'm just thinking about the pain itself. Like, I don't care about dying at this point. I'm right. just like, yo, I'm this far gone. I'm like, you know what, I'm about to do it. And at the time where I was about to do it, I started to tip my car a little bit, right? My, trying to build yourself up at that point. Right, right. My wife calls me, literally. And you know how when you have Bluetooth in the car, it comes straight through the car. So it's loud when, when somebody calls. And I literally jerked the car back out of frustration and out of being in fear to talk to her on the phone. So now I'm going down the hill again. I'm talking to her on the phone, right? So I'm talking to her on the phone and I rush her to get off the phone. Right, so I can proceed to do what, I, what I'm going to do. I'm still far gone at this time. Yeah. I start to tip my car again and her mother called me. So now it's like, God give me two chances. You know what I'm saying? He gave me two chances, I jerk the car back. By the time I'm done talking to her, I'm at the bottom of the hill. And you know, if you listen to this story right now, you can go to the Players Tribune and I go in detail with the story even more further than I am right now. Cause I gotta be careful, you know what I'm saying? Cause it could trigger some people, but you can, you can go read this story on the Players Tribune. But by the time I'm at the bottom of the hill, like that's when I actually realized what I what I just did. You know, I'm a God fearing man, right? Right, right. And people say you 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 got the money, you shouldn't have no, no suicide issues. Like, what kind of problems could you possibly have? But that's not reality. That's nah. not reality for the person who was actually in the position. Right. With the money. There's more at stake for the person who is leading. There's there's a lot of weight to carry when it comes to that. And a lot of people don't notice what the man of the house goes through. I, I, I just want to be honest, man. Like, yeah. We suppress so much. You yeah. know, a lot of it's us. Yeah. Uh, I don't even want to go to the doctor. I don't want to take no medicine every day. Uh, I'd rather eat right and work out at this point yeah. uh, than to get on a pill every day. I have to take that little Monday through Friday thing, and I'm dumping pills down my throat. I'm irresponsible. I don't want to do no skincare regimen. I'm not going to keep up with it. And just give me an old towel, and, <laughs> and I'm going to wash my face. And my, I, as long yeah. as I ain't musty, I don't care. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, like, me, 
I can go through something, but I feel like if I bring it home, now I'm imposing it on my wife. Mm-hmm. And I don't want her to feel like she have no problem. Right. So I hold it in. Yeah. Like, nah, nah, it's good. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, hey, baby. Yeah. Grab the kids and put I, I that use face. that as my full fuel and put on that face. Mm-hmm. You heard what he just said? He said, put on that face. You got to turn it off. Because they, the children feel the energy. Like your wife, they, they, they don't. They're not even necessarily looking for that, but mm-hmm. they can tell a difference yeah. most of the time. Or sometimes people be so caught up in everything else, depending on how your household roll. Yeah. The woman got a lot on herself, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Like, I'm in here filming with you, been running around all day. My wife had to get the kids straight. She had to take them to school. She had to go do her work. She had to do her school work or whatever. She, whatever she has to do in the day, her day ends and begins with the kids. Yeah. I'm going to go make the bread, pay the bills, do this, this, and that, right? But I didn't realize that my first man. Yeah. I didn't realize how hard it was as a woman. And I used to feel like if I pay the bills, I'm the shit. Yeah. All these broke bum ass niggas out there ain't bringing <laughs> nothing to the table, laying up on women, using their cars. And yeah. Shit. I'm going to do something. Yeah. I want to bring something to the table even when I'm broke. Yeah. I got a couple hundred dollars here. I'm going to pay something. I don't yeah. want to bring nothing to the table. If I ain't got nothing, I need to be working. Yeah. I don't need no woman. But we don't, we don't realize that the women, they. They just want you to talk, right? Yeah, and, but yeah, I like and that. It, but, but what see, we were taught, what we were taught about we, talking. We don't really, you know, if we if we speak up, speak out, or we don't want it to come back to haunt us, right? We don't want them to use that in, in a later argument or yeah. or what have you. But at the same time, man, as as men, we have to learn like the better coping ways to be able to open up, right? Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we can't even articulate how we feel it. Yeah, yeah. We don't even know how to say it. Yeah, no, even the king put it in words. Nah. Yeah. And, yeah. and but the crazy part about it is our significant others, the women that are in our life, they can sense it and feel it, mm-hmm. right? So, but they they are just a a, a ear for mm-hmm. us, and we have to understand that they're an ear. So sometimes even when I know um, my wife has had a long day. Or I know she's going through it, you know what I'm saying? Being with the kids and things of that nature. You ain't gonna bring up none of your stuff. Man, so <laughs> now, nowadays, I'll ask her like how her day had went, right? Mm-hmm. Or what did she do and stuff like that. And it'll spark up a conversation. Mm-hmm. So then we can go back and forth about some of the stuff that we dealt with throughout the day. Yeah. You know, it don't have to be the dark depths, right? But it has to start somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you if you start somewhere, then later on, you'll be able to start to really be like, all right, boo, like, look, this is what's really going on with me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you build that trust with them. Mm-hmm. So. And I'm, I want to tell uh, women something. Black women, y'all like the most powerful thing on earth. Y'all don't even know it yet. <laughs> when you figure out your power and you figure out that you are a king maker, mm-hmm. You know, like you yeah. can make a king. You can build him up and you can bring him down too. You just got to figure out what you want to build. Yep. Different women yep. bring different stuff out of, out of men. I mean, yep. you know, some people uplift, some people bring down. Hey, mm-hmm. until you figure out what you want, what you want to be sold back in life. But the thing about it is when people talk, man, some people get into these little situations where they talking at each other. Yeah. So if I say my problem, I done had situations where I'm tripping. I got an issue. My mental health ain't right. And instead of them empathizing and understanding, they be like, oh, shit, I got this and I got that. And they start pouring all their stuff out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we like, I kind of be like, well, God damn, I'm not venting to this motherfucker no more. Because when it was, I just had my moment and I listened to a hundred of their moments. And I'm, you know, I've learned to, you got to listen more. And then not everything you, you, sometimes you just there to listen. Yeah. I had to learn that part because I used to thought that she was talking and if I didn't respond, she thought I was ignoring her. Yeah. Because it's, it's, a, it's a communication gap. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes people want to talk to complete strangers. I, 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 I find a lot of just people I don't even know just mm-hmm. open up like a book and yep. more because there's no judgment, mm-hmm. there's no past. It's not, it's, we're having a problem right now and I could talk about it. Uh, what helped you through uh, your dark times? Like, how did you come? from up under that and get to this point now? Man, so that was my first time after telling the story, that was my first time saying I needed help. I told my coaches that, right? I'm like, look, football was important, but my mental health is more important. I remember saying those words and they put me with a therapist outside of the facility. And that's when I really started to unpack. That's when I really started to find out 
who the real Marcus Smith was. I had through to, therapy. Yeah, through therapy, man. Mm. And I had to go back, literally, and, and it was trial and error too. Like the first couple of days, I was still blaming football mm-hmm. for all all the stuff that I went through. Oh, we always got an escape yeah. or an excuse. Yeah. So I'm like, whoa, like football. This it did this to me and da 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 da. Right. It's, but then, it's, it's a part of it. But then but ain't with it. Yeah. I started to go back like, oh, man, I've been dealing with this for a minute. Since you were eight. Yeah, and I haven't addressed this. And this is what I need to talk about. I need to talk about my parents getting a divorce mm-hmm. and how that affected me. At what age did that happen? That was eight. That's when it kind of like around where it started. Yeah. You get See? what I'm saying? Yeah. And, so, and you ain't thinking of that. No. Nah, that ain't on I'm your not, mind. You're like, that's so old. Yeah. Like, but yeah. it's still in the back of your brain somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you... I was saying this yesterday, mm-hmm. right? Some of the things, the dark secrets that we have, yeah. some of the things that happen in our life, some of the things that we've seen that's very traumatic, right? Mm-hmm. We have to speak about those. We have to pull it from the back of our brains, move it to the front, right? That's mm-hmm. through talking to somebody. It don't have to be a therapist, but, but somebody that you can trust, right? Mm-hmm. You move those thoughts to the front of the brain and release it out your mouth so you can free yourself from it. Mm-hmm. And so that's what happened. To me, I started to free myself each and every day, and that's when the healing process started. So me healing literally is a journey, and I'm still healing today. So that's why it helps me a lot speaking to you right now, talking mm-hmm. to you, having that conversation right mm-hmm. now, doing yeah. speaking engagements, right? Because mm-hmm. it's really helping me free myself. Right. So right, I love right. it. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, I, I I don't I like I like that transparency part. Mm-hmm. Like that's why I like Tom Jamal so much. Man. Right? So Tom just come straight out with it, and you are gonna be sitting there like, wait a minute, wait what? What she just say? <laughs> no, she just said that. Yeah. And she's not. That's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's horrible. Yeah. But and then you see her stand right back up. Mm-hmm. And continue on. You know what I'm saying? Like what helped me a lot was. Mm-hmm. I got this OG in my brain. Yeah. He talk crazy and I can't punch him. I can't hit him because he's inside my brain. Yeah. I'll see somebody with it worse and I use that as my fuel. Like, you had to go through that pussy. So what you crying about? Yeah. That's what he's saying in my head. I'm telling you, like, and I'll be like, fuck you and everything. Like I done had arguments with him and don't nothing stop him. Yeah. You know, I'm telling you, like, it's some things that I shouldn't do that cross my mind. And nobody like to talk about this shit. And, and my mind will say, yeah, do that. Yeah. And OG will say, that's some bitch shit. <laughs> in yeah. my head. Yeah. Fuck that. Any counselors out there, tell me what's going on with me. Anyway, I'm telling you, bro, and it stops me, though. Yeah. I don't, it's, it doesn't bother me because it's never disrespectful. Yeah. It's honorable. It's like the honorable part of me still come out if, you know, I might be looking at something that I ain't looking at, boy, you gonna get yourself hurt. Yeah. My, and he just come out and it be straightforward, blunt. And so sometimes that kind of come out when I talk and I don't even realize it. Yeah. Like it took me being in groups with other people and me communicating and I don't want to do, I like, I'm solution based. Yeah. So I don't want to talk for four fucking hours about a problem. Yeah. Give me the problem and let's, I got some solutions. You either fuck with them or I'm gone. Yeah. Like maybe I'm not the solution man for you. Yeah. But if we going to dwell on some, pro, I, talk about it, get it off your chest. What are we going to do to move forward? Because I've had so much trauma in my life. I don't want to sit in it anymore. Yeah. You know, I've been in foster care where they told me if you tell your mama what's going over here, you're going to go somewhere worse. Mm. As a fifth grader, as a child, I was like, this shit bad. (laughs) If I tell mama it gets worse, I'm not telling mama shit. (laughs) How everything going? Everything good, man. Everything straight. Yeah. It's little kids. Yeah. You're losing weight. What's going on? No, we eating. We good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Scared of worse because I was in bad. Yeah. So I'm overprotective of kids, and I didn't know that trigger until I blew up at one of my jobs uh, not too long ago. Mm. I've come so far, God, and brought me here. My curse everybody out in the fucking building. <laughs> Behind children. That's real, yeah. Some yeah. shit, you know. I ain't going to get into detail, but I seen something I didn't like, and I yeah. been telling people, watch the kids. You know, I'm overprotective of kids. Yeah. I won't, don't hurt Because of what people. you've been through. Because of what I've been through. Yeah. You know, and so I know that I was willing to lie to not go nowhere worse. To my mama, yeah. When she's seeing us losing weight, I had to steal food, bro. Mm. They put cow tongue on the fucking plate one day. Boiled cow tongue. Mm. It looked like a fucking tongue. It was laying on the plate like that. <laughs> I said, "Mommy, I don't eat this." Yeah. You don't eat that shit today. Mm. <laughs> hey, that's real. Nah, that's real. Bite it and it felt just like tuna on your tongue. Yeah. 
Yeah, I pushed it aside. I woke up that night and stole crackers and shit out the uh out the the, the cabinet. I, I fucked a whole box of crackers up. I told him fucking crackers in the water. <laughs> and, and you know, like so when I'm around, bro, if I got nine children and eight pieces of candy, either nobody getting none or everybody getting a half. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a Libra. I want shit fair. Like mm-hmm. I want to treat them all the same. I don't have no. I don't know what a step kid is. Mm. Them my kids, and if they daddy won't fight, nigga, let's do it. I'll fight you behind your kid. Yeah, dude. yeah. Because I love them. They innocent. You know, they didn't ask to come here. Yeah. So I try to keep my adult shit out of kids' life, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are we there? Yeah, man. Man, we that that went by fast. Yeah, like. we we did that. <laughs> and, but I also want to say too, yeah. man. You you understand? Like, you, if you are a man, woman, you know, woman, they. I mean, woman. <laughs> women, yeah, women. Yeah. They um, most of the time like are, are backbones too. Yeah. Trying to be strong, single women out there. You know what I'm saying? And your vulnerability, men too. Like your vulnerability doesn't have to be like everybody got to know you. You being vulnerable. So mm-hmm. if there's some somebody that you want to talk to, right? Mm-hmm. You can find that person, but ain't nobody got to know that. Mm-hmm. You got to know that shit, like. At the end of the day, this is for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're just giving you the knowledge and for you to understand. But you don't have to be up here like us, you know, talking about the vulnerability and yeah, things of that yeah, way. To yeah. like, you can keep that. We grew here. Right. Yeah. It, right. It, 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 I, I mean, I suppressed this my whole life. I'm in my 40s now. Yeah. So, look, tell everybody how they can uh, follow you, get in touch with you, um, you know, and so they can reach back out and you do speaking engagements. So, yeah. if anybody need them to come speak, the Suicide Awareness Month. Hit him up. He just spoke at Southern. Yeah. Uh, did an awesome job. Him and uh, other people like Juno, I'm going to try to get him here. I don't know if he's going to come through or not. I'm going to call and yeah. check on him later. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But tell him how to find you, brother. So my, my Instagram is moneymart91. So that's M-O-N-E-Y-M-A-R-C-9-1. And then my business uh, foundation is the Circle of M. Uh, and we just unmask the feelings that cause anxiety, depression. We do that through you know, podcasts, we do it through awareness programs. And then, you know, I, I go all over to speak, um, to continue to give knowledge and, and breathe life into mm. people. Amen. And you know, that's what we do uh, whenever you're ready. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in to uh, another episode on Ghetto Ways. This was yeah. something we freestyle, had good people in town. I've been taking good care of them. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if you follow them, make sure you reach out to them. If you can relate, they wide open. And if you don't want to talk to none of us, just remember you could dial 988. Yeah. Even if you want to have a conversation, you just want to talk to people. Like, uh, we don't call 911 on people having mental health issues mm-hmm. or addiction problems. We call 988. Uh, we got to get used to that. So make sure you uh, check him out. Uh, support him. I mean, if you're ever in Maryland, even if you're not, start building that bond. And I feel like uh, I've, I've grown close to Marcus in a short amount of time. I feel like if you reach out to him, you could tell that he's going to talk back yeah, and try to sure. help. And I'm not telling a million of y'all to call him. I don't think he can <laughs> save all of y'all. Some of y'all going to have to dial 988. Some of you going to have to check your insurance, see who cover what. Some of y'all going to have to go see what they got here and there. I mean, you just got to do what you got to do for your health. When your eyes bad, eye doctor. Your heart bad, heart doctor. When your mind tripping, I got off my Xanax. <laughs> for you know, sure. I don't take my mood stuff no more. You know what I'm saying? People, some people say I need to go back, but I feel okay. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, I ain't scared to go back. I get on that couch. But thank y'all for tuning in. Keep it locked right here. Thank you for tuning in to Ghetto Ways. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. Thank you.